Okay, today we are going to play some Crassus decks. The first one is going to be the uh, the rug version of the deck. It's kind of a green rag deck that splashes Hadana's Climb, Hydroid Crassus, then some counter spells. I think this is a pretty pretty good place to be to start out. I think you've got a lot of value creatures like this Growth Chamber Guardian, counter spells back up against the control deck. You're pretty beefy. So. Uh, to be up on the creature matchup, so we're going to give this a whirl. This version of this deck could be pretty soft to burn. I pretty much just copied Benjamin Reagan's deck and um, copied Ben Reagan's deck and just cut a couple random cards because I just wanted to try to fit um, Crassus in there because that, that card has been very... Very impressive for me. <laughs> I cards. It's just been the best, the best card, the best new card that I've seen so far is the Hydro Press Step card. Oh, this is weird. Let's move this. Move this. So I'm just excited to try to try it out. Play some more play some more just crassus decks. See what those are like there. <clears throat> Taking our sweet time to get into this league. There we go. All you have to do is complain. And then you're good. The Crassus is sweet. Oh, I still have the Moto, because I had to reset Moto, so I have the Moto Noise on. So let me get rid of that. Um, in dual account settings, display and sound. Yeah, let's just go like this, turn it all off. Okay. All right, this hand is a key. <clears throat> we have Incubation Druid on one, or on two. We're going to need another land, probably. Well, definitely. All right, there's our other land. <clears throat> I don't have any of my stops set. So we're playing against Esper. This is probably a bit of a tough matchup, especially... I mean, if I land a Rhythm of the Wild, it's probably pretty good. Oh, I have to unlock this. I'm going to have to put all my stops where I had them again. So let's just play this Incubation incubation Druid. <clears throat> While Rekindling Phoenix you think would be very good against Control, it's not that great against this version of the deck. So you fade. Okay. <clears throat> I'm probably going to play this and just give it haste because the size of it doesn't really matter. We're going to hope that we hit another land next turn. Just get our damage in. <clears throat> and then I think I, I kind of want to play... Yeah, well now we're going to just jam over Kindling Phoenix. Our opponent obviously can uh, like counter this into a Teferi Tuck. We're in a little bit of trouble. Oh, wow, I didn't have a counter spell for that. So we have Mortify into Wake the Ward. The nice thing is I can keep jamming these because they're kind of, they have to be dealt with on a one to one basis. They can't just get swept up. <coughs> so maybe I'm giving, not giving these Rekindling Phoenixes enough credit in control matchups even when it's um, even when it's something like an Esper deck where they have exile removal. It's kind of nice. I mean the fact that that resolved, we just have this Teferi smacked. Oh I have to move this. 
We have to go to Fairy into two mana removal spell. So I'm actually going to play this. I'm going to play this and I'm going to put it on this Rekindling Phoenix because I would rather have the Rekindling Phoenix be lethal on this and incentivize them to kill this Phoenix. So I put it here and they kill it, then this survives. So I kind of want to just send this at my opponent. And send this to. I probably should just send both of them at to fairy, something so they can't tuck something next turn. Ooh, okay, that's a good card for them to have right there. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm just gonna play this land of wealth out. It's not a lot of, uh, you know, it does. If it gets swept up, it gets swept up. The card was good right here. <clears throat> Cleansing Nova. All right, they untap two lands. We're just going to jam another Phoenix. We basically just have to jam Phoenixes and hope that it's enough. It does not appear that it's going to be. <coughs> We're in a lot of trouble now. They're making an angel? No, they're doing this in their turn. Okay. Oh yeah, that's this is gonna this is gonna seal us, I think. They, they put three cards on the bottom. The opponent has seven cards and an active Teferi. I can actually play this Hellkite, give it haste, and give it a counter, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's a pipe dream that it survives, but... Oh, well, that's kind of... Um, I think in order for me to win this game, I need this Rhythm of the Wild to resolve... And then make it so all my other creatures that they can't deal with easily. And if he counters, it's like, okay. Then next turn, I can just start playing these cards and knowing they're resolving. I mean, they could tuck this, but if they tuck this, and that's still not that awful. I mean, I guess everything's pretty awful at this point. My opponent's activated to fairy like four times. <coughs> Hey, Philly! 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 No! Hey, no! Hey, Phil! Dog's freaking out. Give me, give me one second. Sorry about that. All right, well. Sorry about that. Philly was having some difficulties. Can't counter that. Okay, return that. Into a counter spell. I think I'm going to yield. I've had enough. I have had enough. All right. So the first thing, we want this Crassus. We want these counter spells. I don't know if we'll get all of these in, but we don't need the Thrash Threat. <clears throat> um, probably don't need Hadana's Climbs. Rhythm of the Wild is good. So we currently have the this coming out, this going in. I wonder if the Hellkite's not that good. Or maybe we can cut like Llanowar Elves. 
But Land Royals in the play is probably pretty good. We probably can cut some of, like, I think these are probably more for, like, creature matchups. You know, like, they don't necessarily matter a lot here, I don't think. Yeah, let's try this. I'm going to do a little Threat Light. Maybe they're better. Maybe I'm supposed to cut, like, Land War Elves. Maybe there's just, like, too much air in my deck. Like, if I shave an elf, bring another one of these in. Maybe I can shave, like, a Rhythm because they're likely to have removal spell removal for it. But if I use removal on this, I'm probably okay with that. And I'm going to try this. There's a, I don't know if this is worth it. If this is like having, like, even though this is supposed to be good against control decks, like, if you draw too many of these, then it's it's not good. It's like, the, you only want to draw one. So that means I should have four in my deck. <clears throat> I don't know. Nice. All right, we'll keep this. Wish this was, if this was a stomping round, this hand would be very good. Build through this turn. We don't have blue mana, which is a little rough. I think I'm just gonna play this and put them to the test immediately. Like they need like a cast down or a ward ward, or this is gonna draw me another one of these. I'm just gonna attack, and then I'm gonna do this on my opponent's upkeep. I think. Yeah. Just adapt this. Get another one. If they kill this now, we sink their turn at least. We're going to blink it. Okay. We still kind of sink their turn. Land. All right. I'm going to play another one. And I'm going to play a Land or Elf. We can get Wrath here, which is going to kind of feel bad. Because we're a little short on mana. <clears throat> How's it going, Dean? He's asleep, so I don't want to. He, he just calmed down. He had a little fit a half a second ago. Now I don't want to wake him back up, but he just lied down. So there's the Phil boy. The OG crashes. I just saw your tweet, Dean. Jeez. I think I'm just going to crack in with both of these. Or I could hold back. Yeah, I'm going to hold back, play another Land of Elf. And then I'm going to upkeep, do this. It's going to suck if my opponent rats me, but we're short on mana. I should have um, I should have tapped my Lanor Elf to play that Lanor Elf. And again, if they want to harass us, can tap this, and they don't do anything on their turn. Okay. Field of Ruin. So I'm no longer going to play around whatever it is. Jeez. <coughs> so my opponent showed us Essence Scatter last game, but... I think we're we're not gonna run into that. We're just gonna give this haste, and we're gonna crack in. And Warren Warden costs blue white, right? Okay. So this is where we get Nova. <clears throat> we're sad. I'm 
my opponent plays a Teferi. That also kind of sucks. I would love to rip a blue land, because a blue land would go like land, one, green, blue, one, two, three, four, five. So we draw two cards. Thought Razor, you got it. Probably take one of my Crassus or a Negate. It does kind of feel bad to take a card that I can't cast, but. How are you doing tonight, Dean? How are your dogs? Kind of a tough take. It's probably just a crap. Oh, wow, they took the card that I could cast. So they assume that my hand is just gas. I really don't want to attack with any of these, because if I get if it gets war warranted on the back on the top of my deck, then that's really bad. Yeah, I don't even think I'm gonna attack. Because I, I can't I can't like deal with my land or elves being put back on top of my deck. I think this deck plays a basic island. I mortify. <clears throat> good. It's good to hear. What are you doing? Okay. All right. Well, now we're going to have to, we have to probably hit on like this draw step. It's been an unfortunate in this game. Go back into Diablo 3. Never played that game. Blue Land. The eggs, the absolute opposite. <coughs> Let me go check this deck list out. See if we, how many blue sources do we got here? We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I probably should have added another blue sources if I was going to add these hydroid crazes. My opponent is just going off. They put three cards on top, so like that can't be good. Blue land. Again, I don't even think I can attack because if my opponent does play a Warrant Warden, then like I can't win. I I just like I basically can't win anyways, but I can't win if I keep drawing um land or elves super dead yield to this turn <coughs> I'm gonna get a glass of water All right, I'm gonna draw blue land here. I'm gonna call it. Yeah, I yield. Blah. There it was. Hey Dylan, been a long time viewer. Watch it yours. Watch it yours. I don't know whether or not. Where do I get it or not? Wish I catch you live. My staple well. Gotta set those messages out. Whether get it or not. You're, whether to whether to purchase the deck, is that what you're saying? <clears throat> Man, that was brutal. I probably needed to add like another steam vents to this deck. 
because I added these two hydrate these hydrate crisis. I added three more blue cards. They're late turn blue. They're late blue cards. What are your? It depends on what your goals in Magic are, J Baseball. Like, um, all depends about your goals. Like, yeah, it's a good deck. All right, we'll keep this. Again, we don't really have a uh, blue land, but that might have been me messing up here. Playing the Mono Red Menace, yep. <clears throat> I think I'm going to play Growth Chamber Guardian because it, like, blocks this and it threatens them to use a removal spell to get through damage. Like, they can just, like, though they're going to kill this anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Play MTG long term and enjoy the following hand. Whatever. They're cheap. It's calling cards are expensive. Is it going? All right, they did get that. <clears throat> yeah, I would agree with Dean. There's 25 lands in this deck. <clears throat> I do think that Grixis will get a little worse, though, because it was very good against Ironworks. And it was good against some of the decks that Ironworks. Um, what was that? They shocked me. Oh, they're turning on Spectacle. Okay, that was a nice turn. And we're dead. He's gonna get banned, so we'll see. It won't change anything too too much because it's modern. So we can get rid of these. Probably get rid of all these enchantments. And then just bring in removal. And I guess we can keep in one crassus and go for it. All right, so we have a cannonade and a growth chamber guardian. Growth chamber guardian. We're on the play. So I think I'm going to keep this. And like this is a nice like our mana setup, which we've been having issues with. And this cannonade's pretty good. <clears throat> Hopefully we get to adapt this, but I doubt it. If not, then... Alright, there's Lava Runner. You're going to get Wizard's Lightning. Shot. Alright, well at least we get our two for one here. I'm going to do it on my main phase, because... It turns off Wizard's Lightning. All right. I am just going to cast that next turn, I think. <clears throat> um, I am just going to cast that if I don't draw anything because it cycles. It gains me a life. It does die to Chain Whirler, though, which kind of feels bad. Yeah, I think I'm probably just going to cast it. I can't just not do anything on this turn. It doesn't die to Chain Whirler. It still gets all the power. Okay. Check out the meta pans out like people. This here, I'm probably not going to be on Shadow of the meta. Well, I don't know. I think the meta game moves like. If it, it might make humans get better. We're going to take this. If humans get better, then the deck gets a little worse. For sure. Okay. I could just block here to save the life points. No, I'm going to... Because I'm going to make this a 5-5, five five and I want something on the board to be able to attack with. I 
I doubt they're going to have two removal spells to deal with this Hellkite. And this Hellkite can start dealing a lot of damage. Um, plus one, plus one counter. It doesn't get Lava Coil at all, though. All right, you get the Pyromancer. All right, unfortunately, we got to block this thing. They might be able to, like, shock this and pump it, but... <clears throat> okay, strike me. Oh. What just happened there? They just lightning strike me, right? Why didn't this get a counter? Oh, if it's fewer than three, it only goes up to four. Okay, okay, okay. Forgot about that. John Chato with one scavenging is no blue. A lot of fun. Yeah, I think you need tar fires in that deck to make that deck work, in my opinion, because I think you need to, uh, in order for that deck to be good, you have to be like routinely turning on your threats and be more threat dense. And Traverse does that. Like that's the only reason to play it over the Grixis deck. Yeah, I totally forgot that it only got three counters. How's it going, Andy? Or Andy or Andrew, whatever you appreciate being called. You can play you can play uh Tarfire and Walkers, I think. Here's our, all, our, all of our blue lands. I think I'm going to mulligan. We're on the draw. We don't have a color. Our opponent mulliganed. All right, this hand's pretty strong. We spell breakers, which we can make big, which will make it so they don't get... They can still get lava coiled if my opponent brought that in. We don't want this crisis. Andy Anderson. Never Andrew. Okay. That's nice. A little curve filler right there. <coughs> North Carolina. I can get that. We're going to just block. We're not really going to work at worry about adapting this. Uh, because we just need to, like, survive the early game. This thing's a pirate, unfortunately, but... I think we're going to run this out here because it's likely going to die. Okay. So I could trade with the Pyroman, the Viroshino here, but I have to take two points to do it. I would rather just impact the board, I think. I'm just going to make this a 4-4. Four, four. Make it so they have to use two cards or a Lava Coil to get this out of here. Then I'm probably going to start attacking with it next turn because I do need to, like, get out ahead of my opponent here. <clears throat> I can't just let them sit there and let them do this because they're definitely just going at my head. So I block here, they have two cards, no, they're two spells. So I have to hope that they're bricks, probably. I tried Architects of Will in, like, when it first, for a while, but it does kind of suck having, um, like, sinking your mana to not affect the board. All right. Make another 4-4. Four, four. We could just be dead here. 
And if we are dead, then that is the that is the cost of doing business. All right, we might pop off this. Yeah, I think this is the best time to do this before my opponent makes mana with this thing. And then we crack for eight. And if my opponent doesn't kill us, then maybe we've got a shot. Because we can give this haste next turn. We've gotten pretty fortunate here, considering our opponent um, hasn't hit their second land. It kind of makes up. We had a bad beats in our first match. Shock. All right, well. <clears throat> Haste. You got it? Don't have it. All right, nice. Nice, nice, nice. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, I have this deck misbuilt because I just, like, took this deck, cut four random cards to play with this card, so I always want to play with this. want to draw it often. And I should have cut, like, one more mountain and added a steam fence. I, I was short on blue my last match. Let me try it. I'll let you view first. You shouldn't play a, a control deck in modern. Andy's in the chat. The, Andy plays the best control deck. Literally, Tron is the best control deck in modern. Just, like... Plays bombs, answers things. It's the only one that's good, in my opinion. Plays bombs, answers things, and then <clears throat> just deals with all your permanents and then wins the game. Tron is what control decks wish. Wish they were. <coughs> Alright, so let me go back to the deck here. Pull this up. And just remember for the next time I play this deck that if I do, I need to add one. I need to play probably two Steam Vents or like a Steam Vents and a Sulfur Falls. Yeah. Well, that's kind of my brand. I don't play too much Standard. I enjoy Standard. It's just tough to uh, keep up with. Like making consistent Standard content is hard. Because it moves so quickly, and it's going to move even quickly, or even like more fast. Like the standard metagame is going to move within like hours because of Arena now. And it's just so difficult to uh, keep up with it. I would like to be able to keep up with it, but it's just too hard to do with being married and you know, working forty hours a week, having hobbies. It's just standard is just difficult. I was talking about how you play the best control deck in modern. All right. We get the rhythm on two. See how this draw works out here. The burn menace. Rhythm wild. Not very good in this matchup. Target control deals damage equal to its power to target creature. Play what you don't control. So I think I'm just going to shoot this. Because I really don't want to get this Chain Whirler next turn and not get anything out of it. And Thrash just punches. Two star creature, you control deal damage. And like, is, this is things likely going to get Chain Whirlered. So I wanted to do something with it before it gets Chain Whirlered. I have been struck. All right. Hopefully we hit a... Um, it's going to do here. 
I wonder how this works. Oh, it's, it's upon cast. So I can't, like, get the counter from this and draw another card. But I made it a 3-3, which is pretty good on this board. Gains a life and cycles. So let's see how our buddy does here. Okay, plus one, plus one counter. Playing defense. It's probably dead, but we get to play this dragon, and this dragon should be pretty solid against this deck here. All right, we're, so this means our removal spell's coming. So I guess I should block one of these, because they're gonna have a removal spell. And the land or else might be able to trade with this someday. I'm almost sure that they're going to do this before combat to push another point of damage. Because it's not going to matter. Block here, take four. Block here, take four. The land or else might trade with this someday. Do I want to deal four to me? Four, nine. Probably not. Probably have to just... I probably just have to let them have this. So I'm already going to nine, maybe five, unfortunately. Then we get to play this dragon. I can make it a five, five and attack with it. Can I actually race my opponent? So if I play this, Two, four. If they have like lightning strike, lightning strike, they kill me. Lightning strike shot kills me. Creatures don't kill me. Because when I play this, I deal eight. They go to 11. Next turn, the next one kills them. I kind of just want to like mush. <clears throat> I'm gonna play arena because I'm a part of the card holder network, so I get my cards. Um, I don't pay to play my cards, so I, I just play Moto for free. Yeah, I mean, any two burn spells kills me, but like, I'm trying to think if there's another way around this. Make this a five attack, five next turn attack for ten. I can block. Is it better to play a Growth Guard and Champion, adapt it automatically, or get a counter, and then play a Growth Guard Chamber, a Growth Chamber Guardian and an Elf, and then have the board locked down and make them burn me out? Well, I mean, I meant like adapt, but I mean like give it a give it a counter because it gets a counter from Rhythm of the Wild. That's what I that's what I meant, right? Because Rhythm gives it whatever one or more. So like, I basically play this, it gets adapted on, but it gets the counter. Go get another one, play it, put the counter on it, or I can give it haste, crack in for five. I can play the elf, I can crack in, play the elf, make the elf a two two, make both of these two twos, crack in for five. They go to 10, they go to 14. Next turn, I've got five. Yeah, there's, there's like no way to really do this over two turns without risking myself. <clears throat> I think I want to play to the board. I wonder if I can start attacking with one of these, though. Because, like, getting another one doesn't really matter, and it might, like, the chip damage might matter. So, like, I wonder if I'm supposed to play these two and give them haste, or play this one and give them haste. So, the 17. I mean, it's, it's very hard to do the math over multiple turns, but I think... I think I'm just going to give it a counter. 
get another one and then give this a counter and then get in with my Crassus <clears throat> yeah exactly okay steam can so they're basically not getting through with me on the ground <clears throat> and I can attack for eight attack for eight basically Alright, Chain Whirler. Chain Whirler could induce some trades. So now I think I just play Hellkite, <clears throat> attack with Hellkite, leave these back, and then play another Hellkite and attack with Hellkite and the Krasis, and like try to block in such a way where the Krasis survives next turn. So I can guarantee kill them over two turns. Block here, block here, block there, take two, then two burn spells kill me. I kind of just want to hold everything back to give myself the option to block. Okay. Plus one, plus one counter, haste. Serve in with this. And then probably like try to block out of the next turn, have my Crassus block in a way that my Crassus is likely going to live, and then kill them. <clears throat> so this one came from their graveyard. So you can just draw the cards. Uh, this Rhythm of the Wild did some serious work here. I did not think I was going to, like, I didn't even think I was going to be in this game when I played this thing on three. But when I played this thing on three, it did a lot of work. I don't think it's good in this matchup. Like, I think I'm probably going to board it out, but it was very good in this game. But I probably can bring, like, one in over a Crassus. Like, I, I left a Crassus in because of how my cards lined up. Last match, and I think the probably this rhythm's better. So I'm gonna block this on this. All right. Well, if that's their block, I think I'm gonna try to incentivize some carnage from our opponent, because if they point spells at my creatures, then they're likely dead. They have a or I can just jump. No, I'm gonna do this. Get this chain world off the battlefield. If they point if they just tap man on their main phase and it's not at my face, then whatever. Like I'm okay with that. Alright. Haste, plus one, plus one counter. Back with these. And we'll play our, make sure to play our tap land after damage. There's no sense in going to six. Okay, this is good. <clears throat> oh, that's not good. Well, they light up the stage into Mountain Gitu Lava Runner. Light up the stage again. Okay. So they have their graveyard. Plays that. Alright, so if I block here, block here, 
and then hope that their last card isn't shock. Looks like we got them. All right. <laughs> it's weird the opponent didn't serve in with Steam Can and then pump it to a 4 4. Are you talking about with the uh, with the lightning strike? So I just boarded all these in. The lava coils get kind of the the fiery candidates are kind of awkward because like they have some creatures that don't die to it. But if I can ever pick off like two creatures, then I think it's pretty solid. And then I think we just cut these, <clears throat> and this is what we do. It's like I can keep the rhythm in or keep a hydroid crisis. I don't think any of my other cards, like, I don't think I'm bringing in the gate. <clears throat> the rhythm was really nice playing offense and defense. So I think I'm just going to try it again. I don't think, it likely didn't really matter. My opponent needed me to, to mess up. Um, I don't think this hand's that good. <clears throat> Crazes is pretty slow. I'm going to mulligan as well. I'll keep it even, opponent. All right, I can't wait to fiery canarin my incubation druid away. All right, we just need lands. Didn't I just bottom that? No wonder people play arena. <clears throat> I don't even really want to play anything because, like, it lets them kill this. But if they kill this, they're not killing me at least. If this is, like, a striking me, give a shock. Okay, no, they're just going on a full burn plan. Okay, so then cast a lava coil. So let's just let's just get in our three points here. There's the land. Kill my mana dork makes sense. Land. The opposite of a land. This is an instant, right? Okay. I guess I should... Uh... Alright. So we can kill that end of turn. I guess we're going to kill it right now. All right, lands. All right, we're going to shock here because I'm going to cannonade this lava runner. My opponent's going to play it this turn. These cannonades don't seem super great from this deck. But I just copied it from uh, something that Ben Reagan posted. They just seem awkward because you're incentivized. Like, maybe they should just be, like, shocks. Because you're incentivized to keep in, like, your ramp, and it wipes out your ramp. All right, we're just going to take this out now because if, well, I guess it doesn't matter. My opponent has enough mana at this point where they can play Wizard's Lightning plus another spell more than likely. So it would be nice to be able to hit something. Because most of the time I do like I do like snapping this off, if it means that I can, uh, <clears throat> if it means that I can kill something before I get Wizard's Lightning. Wow. Oh, we can't even cast that. Oh well, we're gonna make a threat. My friends, these fans to be not nice to him. And he's being pretty good. <clears throat> I 
All right, we're dead. Okay, we're on the play. The Rhythm of the Wild is going to be better on the play, but we're still trying to play defense. Maybe we should even have these cannonades, like maybe cut like two cannonades and then bring in like three of these on the play. Because worst comes to worst, it's a 2-2 it's two -two that gets on the battlefield, cycles and gains me two life. Most likely worst comes to worst. I'm going to try it on the play. It might not be correct. But hopefully we can get a hand that's like explosive, jumping out. It's got one land, so we can't keep that. All right, well, at least our mana's decent. Um, I don't think we want this. Uh, can I use extra for those visuals? Uh, yeah, you can. Like, I'll put this on the bottom. Like, it's not ideal, like your deck's, you know, your deck's worse. But, you know, like if your goal is to take go to like a big event, then you should have surgicals. But if your goal is just to play F and M with your friends, then playing Nile Spellbomb sounds better than playing actually. Okay, well we're gonna be able to get to where we want to be with our mana, at least. We probably, we'd probably give this a counter, because if they want to use a Lava Coil on it, then I would rather, like, that's what I would rather them do. It's just more difficult for them to answer that. So I'm gonna just give this thing a counter. I don't really want to race. Play Nihil and Anger, yep. So I'm definitely just blocking. They use a removal spell to kill this, then they use a removal spell to kill this. All right, well, now I'm going to kill it, attack, play the Elf. Because I would just like to use my mana this turn. This deck's really mana hungry, I've seen. So, like, it's good to just use it when you can. Um... So I'm just going to kill this. Feels kind of bad. And then next turn, I'm likely just serving to make it a two-turn clock. I lose the ability from the Hellkite, but it puts the most pressure on them. All right. Well, probably could have seen that coming. Do you, no, they can't have land. They can't have Wizard's Lightning because this isn't turned on. Oh, Okay. So this game might go longer. And if this game goes longer, I think I want this as a 5-5. Five, five. Be just because of the ability. Because I can start picking off their creatures. If I draw a land, I can like play the, the incubator, pick off a land, I'm not going to block. Because we are hitting for seven a turn. All right, you have a lava coil now. All right, well, now we're getting in there. I'm just going to play another five five. I think my opponent's hands, like, it's not very good or it's a bunch of frenzies. I think they'd be like using their burn, depending on what they do here. I mean, I'm going to block because I don't want to go to seven against four cards and five mana. Yeah, I guess that might have been loose. They're still dead next turn. Yep, Ben got me the hard drive presses, presses that I need. That I needed. 
Who does lightning me? Okay. Am I dead? I'm dead. Close match. Maybe I was supposed to plus, like, give one of my things haste. Because <coughs> I would have given one of my things haste, but I would have just died to those chain whirlers. Eventually, like. I don't know. We're gonna get beat up. <clears throat> All right. Um, El Yellow. I don't recognize the name. I've been kind of playing against the same people on Moto because it's very, uh, there's just not a lot of people on Moto. This hand's kind of mopey. There's no acceleration. I can't cast anything. I think I'm going to mulligan. Because if, if they mulligan too, like if I, if I have like a Lanor Elf or a Druid, then this hand's much better. Okay. Put that on top. We'll undo our mulligan. I also think that this deck needs more help in the sideboard against mono red poly. It needs more like Death Gorge Scavengers. Alright, let's play this. Looks like we're playing a green mirror. So it should be fun. Um, I kind of, I, I just kind of like Moto because, like, because Card Hoarder lets me use the stuff for free. Like, I don't really, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not big on Arena. Like, it's obviously great, you know, but, like, my situation doesn't really warrant, um, doesn't really, like, I don't know, Arena doesn't really, like, fit what I want to do. If I wanted to be, like, serious and streaming, I should play Arena. <coughs> oh, I can actually go Rhythm, put a counter on this, play Druid. I don't think it's thick. It's just not worth it. Players that don't want to put the money in, yeah. But you, you have Mana Traders that can help you out with that, you know? All right. This turn is gonna. Oh no, that's not how that works. It doesn't have. Um, that's not how that works. It doesn't have. Uh, it's not uh, Hadana's climb. Duh. If I've been Hadana's climb, it'll put a counter on, and then I'd have gone here. I think that I'm just gonna play this growth chamber guardian or this gruel spellbreaker and make it a. Four four. Threat to trade here. We do kind of, we do waste the mana, but that's life. If my opponent plays to the board, then I can thrash something. Problem is my opponent could be playing like a Galta deck. If they're playing a Galta deck, then like they're just gonna go over the top of what I'm doing here. Had I, had I not just paid for a sub cool response, I could have bought a deck, yeah. I'm definitely going to trade here if I get the opportunity to. But let's see what we hit. Okay, so stopping ground. Unfortunately, I can't really afford to level this up. I can go because 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, 8, 10, 12. So my opponent can cast Galta even if I kill this. So I wonder if it's actually better for me to go Rhythm of the Wild, Growth Chamber Guardian, go get another Growth Chamber Guardian. 
Or if it's better to just play Growth Champion, kill this. Yeah, I'm probably just going to go kill this. I could attack because if they don't block, well, I don't really want to have to do this. So we're going to go, go here. Get this. Play a tap land. Pass. I'm pretty cool passing because we have this crisis. You ever play Popper? I personally find it quite enjoyable. I have not played Popper. I've heard it's good though. All right, we're doing it. So now I'm just gonna um, pump this. Pump this on my turn. Hopefully I hit a land. I'm gonna trade. Trade with this. So it doesn't grow. So I probably should actually just... Man, I have so many mana sinks. I probably should just adapt this, play another one. I could adapt... Then adapt this block here, take a bunch of damage. They can start pumping this, so I need to get on the board. Alternatively, I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. I can draw two cards. That doesn't seem that great. I think I just have to get on the board here. And just keep trying to trade. Probably out of league, that'd be dope. All right, let's block here. <clears throat> it's probably all I can afford to do and just take 10. My opponent sinks their turn, then we untap. That's yeah, probably what I have to do here. Yep. All right, Rekindling Phoenix is nice. So if I adapt this, or I can adapt, this is adapt five. I probably should just play this Phoenix, because Phoenix is the brick wall. I would like to hit my land drops. So maybe it's better to play the Crassus. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, I'm just going to play this Crassus. I think I want to hit land drops. I'm pretty sure that my mana is going to be pretty spoken for. And I can just... The problem is that I'm so far behind on board. I could just keep adapting. Do another one. Or I can just play this Phoenix. This Phoenix is just going to brick wall this thing. I think I just need to make this game go longer. I think the longer this game goes, the better it's going to go for me. Unless my opponent top decks are Galva. That's, that's kind of a rough, rough one for the hit. Okay, that's nice for us. <clears throat> I think now I just crash this. One, two, three. Yeah, we're just going to hybrid crash this. Oh, hang on. If I adapt here, adapt, tap, adapt, go get another one. One, two, three, four, five. Man, this deck's tough to play. There's a lot going on, which makes it hard. Because I could adapt and have it as a blocker. I could adapt, adapt, go get another one, and then my Crassus gets better next turn. And I go, like, block, block, but I have to block everything if that's the case. I can adapt multiple different things. Like this can adapt, this can adapt. I just have a lot going on. I could just keep adapting my growth game, my growth chamber guardians. I'm just gonna crash this. Like it's gonna pad my life total. It's gonna make me hit land drops, which is gonna make everything so much better for me. 
I'm okay just throwing it under the bus. It's a 5-5, five, five, so it's huge. Yeah, I have a lot of adapting I can do. Yeah, and now we're turning the corner. So adapt here. One, two, three, four. I do need to get this game over before I get um, galted, though. So can I kill them in two attacks? Block, block, take four, five. Yeah, I can kill them in two attacks. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah. So let's play this rhythm. Now let's just play the Spellbreaker. There's a lot, there's a lot of ways to use your mana with this deck. <clears throat> yeah, and it's nicer in arena when you can just see it, you know what I mean? I'm gonna play this, give the Hellkite haste, hold the Phoenix, hold the Phoenix back, and then we're good. I do like decks that constantly have places to put their mana. Because it just means you're never gonna run out of things to do, which is nice. Once big midterms are over this week, I will actually try and play MTG. Is it midterms in college time? Yeah, you always have stuff to do. If you have stuff to do, you're good. All right, plus one, plus one counter. Then play this. Crack with this in the crisis. And then we have two lethal attackers next. We have we have lethal set up. Like it's not all three of these are lethal. Alright. Alright, there we go. So against this deck, we want a little more removal, but we don't want like our fiery king waves. Sure, we want lava coil. Rhythm of the Wild actually doesn't seem good. It's been a little underwhelming. <clears throat> probably Disdainful Stroke is good. It only hits Galta, though, so it's probably not that good. We probably just need to have a board presence by the time Galta gets down. Um, Hadana's Climb is just a way to, like, kill them. You know what I mean? Like, just get, just get them dead. The Crassus is kind of good, I think. I actually think the Crassus is good in these creature matchups because they just stall out. I don't know if I want four, though. I want my removal. Though this, this card's worse than the draw. I think this deck wants shock. I need to write this down. I have a little chalkboard over here with my standard notes. I'm going to write this down on. Oh, no. My wife moved the chalk. She's so useless. I'm just kidding, Megan. I think we're going to go like this. Oh, notification from my YouTube channel. Take it easy, Milk Dad. <clears throat> oh, no, take it easy, Jay's baseball, I guess. Yeah. I think I'm going to stream tomorrow night. I want to stream quite a bit the next couple days. I think I actually learn a lot while I stream. Yeah, I, I missed it. I think I learn a lot when I stream because I always, I talk a lot. So I have to learn, I have to like audio justify my lines of play. <clears throat> uh, 
All right, I don't think we can mulligan. The Rekindling Phoenix is really good. We can just get run over here with like a, to another land or elf draw. Pelt Collector. All right, there's the old Hedana's Climb. My chair's messed up. Give me one second. I just startled Phil. Your verbs on the stream, I think. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right. All right, we're getting cracked for four here, which is a lot of damage. All right. I kind of just want to play this tap and play the Growth Guard Champion and, like, be looking to trade it off here. And then get a Phoenix in the play next turn and hope there's no Lava Coil. All right, just gonna trade. We're in a lot of trouble if there's a lava coil here, but if there's not a lava coil, we're we're in we're in decent shape because we're just gonna play another dragon. All right, Ripjaw Raptor, that's fine. <clears throat> so I play Hadana's Climb, put a counter on this, and kill this Steel Leaf Champion, or kill this thing here. How does this go? Whenever you another creature will dies, if that creature has greater power, power greater than Pell Collector. Now I'm just going to play this dragon. And that brick wall is a Ripjaw Raptor. Man, creature combat is annoying when you have this card. All right, no high paradox. That guy's thick. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, put a counter on it, and then I can thrash. One, two, three, put a counter on. <coughs> then I can like thrash this and then figure I can just chump here, and then this can eat like one of these things. And I can figure that out. <coughs> Moving forward, I guess. Or I can just put a counter on this and then thrash like block here. I can thrash something else. Yeah, I think I like that better. I have not. I, I think that the Dovin's good. I need to tap appropriately here, so we need to go blue. <coughs> Excuse me. Play this. Put a counter on this. We're not attacking. This is an instant. Excuse me. So I'm just going to go block, block, this smokes this. And because it punches, we still just destroy them here. This worked out well. Not gonna attack with the guardian, yeah. Man, if you're trying to kill this this deck through combat, then then that's tough to do. I think it's I don't know which of these enchantments has been that great. I think this deck needs. I wish I knew where my wife put the chalk. She always goes around moving stuff. And by moving stuff, I mean she cleans the place up after I make a mess.
We're going to play black green next. Nice crossed. All right, we got a Rhythm of the Wild draw. So let's see what this is like here. It's a blue green deck as well. Alright. They're rampant. Alright, I'm just gonna slam this rhythm. I think my opponent should have offered the trade there. This deck also doesn't have a way to deal with like an enchantment, which I don't know if you maybe that's just the plan because you have negates. In the sideboard. All right, they have Adonis Climb. So we're gonna, oh geez, gosh, we're gonna do a very similar thing here. All right, they're on a wild rope blocker plan, so that we're gonna have to start turning up the heat. <clears throat> I kind of just want to play a Rekindling Phoenix and put a counter on it. Really? Whoa. No, I want to tap. Oh, it's, it's, it's got, oh, I didn't have to get, I had to give it haste. Tilt. So now I want to play this tap. Okay. That's cool. Moto does that now. All right, so we made a mistake there. I couldn't adapt. I couldn't give it haste, and then I should have played my tap land. So we have a lot of mana next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can go like play two spells, which is nice. So we're definitely gonna give our Phoenix haste and start attacking there. Okay. Yeah, I definitely really think we have to try to end this game quickly. Climb onto here, or climb probably, okay. Yeah, we need the flyers to start coming in here. So one, one two, three, four, a seven, eight. So we can go four, no, we can't play. So we're just gonna play this tap. So let's make red. Probably just give it haste, to be honest. And then we'll give this Gruel Spellbreaker two counters. But I do think we have to start killing our opponent. Because this Adonis climb is gonna is gonna be tough, especially if my opponent Hydra Crassus is here, then. That looks like exactly what's happening. We're so dead. Opponent Hydro Crassus is for 42. They draw four cards. Have a 9 9 Trampler. This flips. Yeah, we're dead. I yield. I yield. All right, so we want Lava Coil for sure. This rhythm, I think, is small ball in this matchup. And then I think we're going to want these to be able to go long. Um, I'm going to cut a spell breaker because I don't think it's going to be about that. I think it's going to be setting up like your mana and then going over the top of the Crassus or a Hellkite. Yeah, this Hydra is this Hydra's nuts. I think that's another thing that I have to work on with this deck is like I, no I noticed that I don't think the rhythms are that good. All right, we'll keep this. It's a little slow, but. We're going to tap land into probably Druid. I don't think we're going to play Growth Chamber Guardian. You should be able to see, click on it on the Cardboard Live app. Live app. Okay, no no play from our opponent there is gas. Land Wells right on time. 
We're just going to keep developing our mana. Alright, they have Wild Oak Walker. Jeez. Play this. Play this. We're going to be able to play Rekindling Phoenix, but if we'd have hit a land, we'd play Rekindling Phoenix. Yield through this turn. Okay, so they're going to start doing their thing. They brought in Brontodon. Yeah, so I think this deck needs work, but I think it's pretty solid. And maybe we just... Maybe our Phoenixes are just playing defense here for the rest of the game. We can just chunk like forever. <clears throat> two two drops. Do you have four to five three drop enchantments? Right? How do you feel about that? I don't. I, the rhythm of the wild has been subpar. I'm gonna block this thing here. Like my opponent pushes damage, but this is kind of like a free block. If they have a pump spell, then they like whatever. We're we're it's we're, st we're gonna play another phoenix next turn. They could Pognify this token. Okay, they're playing another Thrashy B. Alright, Stomping Ground lets me double spell. Or I can play another Phoenix and start attacking. I probably have to just... I probably have to hold... I just need to survive long enough to develop my mana. Surprised they kept that Bronton on top if they needed lands. Okay, three. Thrash threat this. I'm going to wait till they do it, though. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's show shock. I still think I can attack because like this this wild growth walker is just a problem. I could thrash threat now. I probably should do that. So let's wait. Put a counter on this. And then thrash this on that. And triple red. Just keep their man under control. And now we can start like just the growth guardian the growth chamber guardian train. <clears throat> Another wild growth walker. They probably keep it on. Oh, oh, I guess they need land, so they can't keep that on top. Another druid. Okay. All right. Well, I think we just start. We just start adapting, growing our board, and we probably have to start attacking. I don't think I can attack with two, but I can at least attack with one. The next turn, I put both the growth guard, growth guard and champions, growth chamber guardians on the battlefield at least. All right, well that's annoying. It's not an explorer. So it doesn't trigger this at least, but it does give it trample. Will you be my friend? I am your friend. I'm confused, Jen. 
You are my friend. Okay, let's get another one. All right, now we can start attacking. Okay. Wow, that's a lot. That's going to let me start shooting down a lot of things. So play this. I'm going to shoot down their Llanowar Elf. Um, and then shoot them for one. Okay. That was no response for a second, but made it worth saying. Great. That's what I'm here for. <clears throat> so, yeah. It's all about mana development and stymieing your opponent's mana development. Now, we don't have any way to get develop our mana, but we do have a, a way to kill theirs. So... Our opponent's on the mulligan, so we should be in pretty good shape here. Then leading on island is awkward. Didn't really matter which fetch land, which land I played there. This has been the best deck I've played so far. That's dead. I'm gonna try to sandbag this Guardian until I can play it and activate it. I like killing things and or people. It's the way to do it. I think I'm just going to make this a 4-4. Four, four. Like, like, damage doesn't matter. What matters is size. And we want to be the biggest kid on the block. And if I block here, I sink their mana, they will get another one. But like I'm gonna be on the growth chamber, garden chamber fight as well. And then I have the chance to kill the next one, like play my own guardian, and then um hold up thrash threat for their guardian. Well now that's gonna change because we're going here, and if they want to Play theirs and evolve it, and that's okay. We'll just evolve this, and then go get another one. We just want to be ahead. We're we're we're, we're looking to break the serve on mana. Okay. This is actually going to work out nice, because in response. To them adapting, will adapt, and then thrash threat their growth garden, growth chamber guardian. Oh, this cracks this. Get out of my face. You can go adapt yourself. <clears throat> So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we can play the Hellkite, because this is six, nine mana. We can play the Hellkite and shoot something. Okay, we get a three, three. All right, so let's start by attacking. They're not gonna block. So we get in a free, free five points here. And then we play this. Play stopping ground, tapped. I could have, uh, I guess I could have given it haste and just rattled in because like my man is pretty spoken for with uh, GCG chains. Yeah. This is okay. Attack Vivian, attack Vivian. So I could play another one, or I could adapt, go get another one, play it. 
I think I'm going to play the Hellkite, though. I think the Hellkite is the highest upside. They just use a Vivian. Let's hope they don't have another one. All right, we got the... the uh, we only went three. Oh, no, we lost the first round. Okay. All right, so with this deck here, I think... I think these fiery candidates are are not that great. I think I want to go down one of these and then add another creature to the deck. Maybe like or a creature or like let me just go quantity one here. This has been the best deck I've played so far, though. So like put one of these in here. Um in the sideboard, we need to get rid of these. I think we want like some shocks because it seems like being able to shock in the land of War elf mirrors is pretty important. But then again, it's the incubation joint that matters. So I think we so screw that. We want uh, what's the card? Death Gorge. Death Gorge Scavenger, maybe like two or three of these. <clears throat> and we have a lot of counter spells. Maybe cut a counter spell and then play like two Thrashing Brontodons. This is just my thoughts on the deck here, but 